I don't have any anybody coming in. Oh yes, we have six. Hello, good morning. Welcome. Welcome everybody. Good to see you. Oh, we're starting uh we're starting off with a beautiful bird already in in paco's telescope we're gonna give it give a few moments for everyone to sign in we we have a beautiful beautiful bird in in the spotlight at the moment it's a green honey creeper male okay people We've got a few people uh, still signing in. I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds and then we'll begin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome to our first live um, birding tour in Arnal. Um, we're so happy that you joined us. Uh, we have um, a, a lot of beautiful birds to share with you today from a couple of spots, and we're excited to be able to do that. Um, some amazing species, and we do hope that this gives you um, a little taste of what you could see uh, when you come down to Costa Rica and visit us. Um, I have with me, uh, uh, ho helping me host, Ashley Torgerson, and I have our two expert guides, uh, Paco Madrigal and Eric Guzman, um, who have tons of experience uh, as naturalist guides and are bird lovers, so I'm sure that they'll be able to show us some great birds. Um, we want to get straight to it since it's a short, short uh, time together, so I'm going to pass the microphone over to... Uh, Paco and Eric. Just okay. Second. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're here in the uh, Arnell Observatory Lodge, uh, rainforest, uh, at middle elevation, about 700 to 800 meters above sea level. It's all green, and we have a green bird. This is a female. What you're looking at right now. My name is Paco Madrigal, by the way. Um, uh, a naturalist from this part of the country. Uh, what we have in this in the screen right now is a female. You can see a little bit of yellow on the legs. That's a female sh shining honey creeper. Uh, when did you see the male? I mean, she's cute. She is cute, but uh, this is a female shining honey creeper, and you can see a little bit of st streaking on the chest and also a little bit of yellow legs, and mainly green. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's great to have you all here. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Eddie Guzman. I'm ready to show you some birds right here in Costa Rica. We are at uh, Observatory Lodge. And um, right here, I am by the garden area. And I'm very happy to start the morning with this gorgeous toucan that we have today right here that I would like wow. to show you. <laughs> uh, this is a yellow-throated toucan. Let me see if I can uh, get a little bit closer. I can hear it. Eddie. It's also making sound. Yeah, they're all singing right now. And these are all yeah. uh, cecropia tree. This is a chest of mandible toucan, one of the species that we have, uh, the biggest, the largest toucan. And these are uh -huh. Ramphasti, the family. Uh -huh. Is still your very magic tree? This is my magic tree. I would say uh, <laughs> it's been very busy this morning. Very lucky. <laughs> A moment That's ago, there great. were like uh, maybe 10, 15 mm -hmm. toucans right there. And earlier this morning, there was like a, uh, the two other species that we also find in the garden here, which is the uh, Collar Arazari, the smallest uh, in this area, I mean, I mean here, and also the Kill Bill toucan, which is the other species. This is great. So you can see that the tree right there. We have like right now, like five toucans. Let me see if I can get the other species. I just saw the out oh, there, right here. Oh, I got it, guy. Let's see. We have the beautiful color Arasari. Look. Nice. And, uh, Fantastic. This time we have nice. yeah, another beauty right here, right on the Cicropia tree. Eddie. 
this is great to have it in this uh, open tree because uh, there's not much vegetation on it. So you can yeah. see really clear all the details, all the colors. Look at a big yellow eye, red rum. Yeah. Look at the mark on the, on the breast, lower part. Color Arasari. Wow, the species. As you can see, actually, in the background, we have the base of the Arena volcano, and then we have the primary or old growth forest right there in the trail. So basically, we are in the edge of the forest. So there is a lot of activity right now. Let me try to find another species. I'm going to get back to this token code. The yellow throated. Sorry, I didn't mention the name before, but this is a yellow throated toucan. In some of your bird book, you will find it as a chestnut mandible, chestnut mm -hmm. mandible chicken. As you know, Costa Rica is like a paradise for birds. Uh, we have more than uh, 920 different species. We mm -hmm. also have some of your birds who sometimes are during the migration. Uh, we have about 700 residents, and then we have also the uh, migrant species as well. This is a chestnut mm -hmm. or yellow-throated chicken calling right now. Look at how loud, loud it is. Wow. Yeah, that's wonderful. Great. And this uh, shining honey creeper is uh, behaving very well. It's a female. Can you see it clear on my on my scope? Uh, yes, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah, you can see it. She's just staying there. Uh, I think it's a he, I mean, it could be a he, but um, they don't, the males and the females, they look like uh, when they're young. Here's a different honey creeper, and let me see if I can get it on. And here I go. Let me see. Uh, I have a, I have also right here. Uh, well, go. Uh, well, uh, there, go there, there is. Uh, uh, yes, I have right here a female uh, mask tatira. Ooh, that's the nice. right. Yeah, that was a female mask. The time. You can Let's zoom in that. now, Eric. Yes, go. Let's see. Oh. All right, just came in. You see? Yeah. A little red mask right there. Let me put zooming in a little bit more. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mask the tyro. This is the female. The male is way more white, more bright color. Oh, just moved a little bit. Actually, that's a ficus tree. Full of food right now. There's a lot of. Uh, activity but they move so fast at the moment let me see if i can get something else right here oh i just saw the mail just flew away okay sun is shining right now it's clearing up more i hope the volcano will clear up in a moment and we will be able to see the beautiful arenal volcano taco has a bird yep believe it or not that is our national bird called the clay color thrush. Uh, don't ask me why that's our national bird. But uh, they're actually very, they're fairly common, like everywhere you go in the country, Pacific, Caribbean, you go up to the highlands, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna find, they're, they're with you every single day. Um, during breeding season, they have a beautiful melody. They're singing, like maybe from, oh, there you went. Uh, four in the morning, uh, they start very, very early, but it's a very nice melody that they sing. So, yep, that's our national bird, uh, clay called thrush. And uh, here I'm going back to the yellow throated toucan, right by the, by this cedar tree. Let me just try to zoom in right here. There you go. This is not the one calling, actually. If we go back to the tree where I uh, pointed out the first token in the morning, that's the cecropia tree right there, a dead cecropia tree. It has like four token right now. Yeah. Very active this morning. I can hear them, Eric. They're singing away. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's great. That's wonderful. Just go back here, right here for the tatira. How many, oh. how many species of toucans do you see in, the, in that area? Yes, in this area we have, uh, well, the three species out here, but if you go a little bit into the forest, you might find the yellow ear, which is another specialty of this area. Well, look at here, we up. Oh, Paolo, hey, Paco, you have something right there? 
I got an Oro Pendola, which is one of the largest uh, ictarids, one of the largest birds in that family, where the Orioles, the Grackles, the Meadowlarks are in there. This is a Montezuma Oro Pendola, and uh, it's only one. They usually go around in big flocks. You can see a little bit of the yellow tail uh, and other colors. Uh, they build... Um, they build uh, big colonies. They nest in trees with 30, 40, or 50 nests. Uh, the females are the only ones who build the nest. The male is only there to, you know, to push other males away yeah. to see if he can mate with all the other female. Um, the nest is like a big, long sack that the females we where she, there she is, or he. Um, the colors are... Um, the colors uh, are not very different between male and female, but the sizes. So the, he is like 50% bigger than the female. Uh, Montezuma Oropendula. Great, let me see. Wow, they are moving very fast. By the way, this is tricky right here right now because there is a lot of fruit and trees. So they move back and forth very fast. Okay, there was a clay color thrush, our national bird also. Let me see. Okay. Can you spotlight me? Yes, there you go. Yes. Hold on, let me see, just to get the... You can see why sometimes it's really hard to, to see bird right here in the foliage, especially when tree has a lot of uh, epiphytes or bromelias or other other kinds of plants, other species, very tricky. That's why I love Cecropia trees. This one right in front of me, because we have sometimes woodpeckers, euphonias, tanagers, toucans, all kinds of birds moving and feeding also in this uh, species of tree. Okay, let me see. I can hear a uh, scarlet rum tanager, one of the most beautiful species. Let me see. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. Right here, I got it. Oh, look, 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 Scarlet mm -hmm. Rum Tanager, oh, a male. Nice. Yes, if you have the Costa Rican bird book, uh, you might find this species as the Passerinis for the Caribbean and Cherry Tanager for the Pacific. It was yeah. split at some point. Right now, they went back to uh, Scarlet Rum for all over the country. Actually, the female uh, in the Caribbean look completely different, like the one on the Pacific side. It looks, um, well, actually, the one on the Pacific is a little bit more, more colorful than this one, a beautiful, colorful male. Why do you think males are so colorful and females have to be more like uh, brown or, or, uh, or different, a little bit more dark, let's say? Well, because they stay on the nest, taking care of the, well, uh, taking care of the baby to be a little bit more safe. And while males are actually moving around. I see something, oh. Ooh, look what I have right here, uh, pyrotic flycatcher. Okay. Nice. There you go. Uh, do you hear the monkeys, the howler monkeys on the-, on the, oh, the, the Howler the monkey. monkey, yeah. And this morning also there was a troop of uh, spider monkeys also moving around. This is a pyrotic right. flycatcher, one of the species uh, that they steal nests from other flycatchers or other birds by doing a very yeah. loud pose, you know, like noisy sometimes, very annoying, sometimes very loud, calling and calling. Uh, nearby uh, social flycatcher nest or even kiskadi nest, which is also part yeah. of this uh, one of the most biodiverse and biggest uh, bird families in the tropic. Pyrotic yeah. flycatcher, yes. As we can see some visitors now walking into the some of the trails that we have right here in the lodge. Oh, I have another flycatcher right here. Let's see. A little bit actually similar to the uh, pyrotic, but this is called uh, sulfur belly, sulfur belly flycatcher. Remember when I said that we have some uh, migrant species, uh, uh, basically late November through April, we have some, so most of the migrants are from North America. There it goes. Yeah. Oh, we can also hear the monkeys, but also we have few species from South America, which makes sense. You know, when it gets too cold in North America, some of the species have spent some time in Costa Rica or just uh, pass through. I mean, they stay right. here for a couple of weeks while they are, you know, 
uh, migrating down south. Right. So Eric, uh, Eric, I wasn't here when you were talking about the piratic flycatcher, but uh, did you tell them why is it called piratic flycatcher? Eric? No, no. Yes, yes, Paco. Okay, piratic flycatcher. Well, it's a it's a southern, it's a South American species that comes from from the south, and they come up here. They don't really build a nest, but instead they wait for all the birds to build their nest, and then and then they're gonna steal that nest. They don't take all the material, but they just fight oh, sorry, and sorry. Fight, oh, oh, fight. Hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Okay, we have another species of chicken right here. They just flew across. Let's see if I can get it quickly. Uh, there you go. A kill built to can. Oh, nice. nice. Kill built to can. Look at nice. the beauty. Oh, colorful, big. Wonderful. Let, let me see because it's not. It's not. Okay, it's focusing on the branch. There you go. It was scared by the crested one. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I that did hear that. I, yeah, I heard the first one. All right, let me try to get the one as well because, uh, okay. Oh so my much, God. So much activity going on right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here too. We're getting. Yeah. Uh, oh. Look at this. Look at this. Scarlet Thigh Darkness. Scarlet Thigh Darkness male. Ah, there you went. Okay, look what I have right here. I have a crested one. Okay. Yeah. I'm on this cobra right here, one of the turkey family or crassidae. There we go. Hold on to try to zoom in right here, right now. Beautiful. You can see the red throat right now. This is a large, noisy bird. Uh, spend times like this in lower branch, not to hide in the trees, sometimes walking on the ground. But also right here, this is one of the best spots uh, in Costa Rica to get the uh, great curacao as well. I hope I will show up later. This is another members of this family. Also, we have the chachalacas, we have crest one and great curacao. There is another one right here. Let me try to get it. There you go. Look at this, right at the cecropia tree. Crest <laughs> one. You can see the red throw. Wow, that's great view, Eric. Yeah. As I said before, the, this is the lucky tree. There lots of birds and sometimes mammals, <laughs> as coatis. Uh, it's lost yeah. and other species also like to hang out in this uh, species of tree. There it goes. Drop down. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> there you go. Very active right now. Oh, I go, go back to the toucans. Let me see. Okay. I have three toucans right now. Oh my God! Look at that. <laughs> three chickens, uh, three uh, yellow solid chestnut mandible. Yeah. At some yeah. point, being called also a black mandible chicken. I like better chestnut mandible. Look, they're kissing each other right yeah. now. By the way, hi, hard to tell which is the male, which is the female. There is right. no sex, sexual dimorphism between male and female. Yeah. Well, look at the beauty. Very active this morning, very loud. And this family run fast today. When you were asking before about how many species, yes, um, four or five uh, uh, species right here. But in the gardening, what you get to see is a chestnut mandible, collar arazari, and kill bill, the one that we just saw quickly. Look, Paul, Paco, what you have? No, I have uh, the male uh, green honey creeper came back. And he's feeding on uh, watermelon right at the moment. And um, I hope people can understand that we are only, we can only move so much. I move only like one or two meters from where I am on this tour. So uh, uh, yeah, we're lucky to see all these uh, colorful birds. Um, this is uh, a green honey creeper male. Beautiful. Is that a good view, uh, everybody? Yes. Heather, Ashley, can you see it clearly? Very well, very good. <clears throat> excellent, excellent. And uh, Heather and Ashley, uh, if people have questions as we go, we don't mind. We would like to answer some questions, Actually, or we can leave, or we can leave questions for the end. Okay, I have a question, Paco, about the two cans. Um, yeah. when, when Eric said that they were kissing, were they fussing with each other? Were they angry, or was it friendly? 
I I think it was friendly. I mean, this is like mating season. A lot of the times you'll see males uh, feeding the female. You know, that's a way of, uh, uh, um, um, you know, uh, you, you see the males uh, get going out there. You see that on raptors. You see that on many different species of birds where for attraction, they come and feed the female. And now, now uh, sometimes uh, you can have toucans uh, fighting and uh, they, you will see them hanging from each other's uh, beak. So you have one toucan, and, but I don't think that was the case there. Uh, okay, Eric has a bird. Yeah, does he have? Uh, this is uh, another scarlet rum tanner here. Oh, that's my bird. There's your bird right here. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. Yeah, oh, this beauty, a little rum. bit uh, beautiful blue, blue beak, a full grown yeah. male. They usually travel in pairs, but this is one of the species that you can see in uh, mixed flocks. So they move in the forest. Right. right now it's calling a little bit. Really close. And you were right, Paco. This is a species that we actually just uh, see from here. Just imagine, just from the garden, just from one spot. We're not moving much. Oops, right. let me see if I see something else right here. Let me see. Would you like to see our that's first hummingbird of the morning? morning. Ooh, that's a banana yes. queen. Banana this queen. is a rufous tail, the rufous tail hummingbird, but it was actually fighting or chasing by a, a poo poo crown. Oh, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Look. Oh, Ooh, my yes. goodness. A poo poo yes, crown look. fairy, one of the most beautiful species of hummingbirds in Costa Rica. It's been, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, chasing. Oh, and we have there a little creeper really close. Yeah. Woo. There's a three species already. Oh, the purple Wonderful. crown fairy is a gorgeous species of hummingbird. Just remember, you in Costa Rica, only for Costa Rica, more than fairy. 50 species, oh, 52 species of hummingbird for Costa Rica. Just imagine, how many species do you have in the United States? Ah, mm -hmm. we have, um, this is an endemic, or let's call it endemic, yes, from uh, Alaska all the way to Tierra del Juego. We have mm -hmm. uh, this family, Trichili or Trichili. Uh, we have a great variety, so all colorful birds. And, Hummingbirds oh. for Costa Rica. And Gorgeous. It, this is the one of the most common species. Are you able to? Uh, sorry. Are you able to zoom in a little more? Let me see. Let's see. Yes, but let let's see something. I think it's not all focus because this is actually a little bit far away. Yeah. But let me see. Oh, I think it moved. They are very territorial. They actually come back to the same perch all the time. So hopefully, it's gonna come back in a moment. Let's see, I see something else right there. Eric, did you share the exact number of hummingbird species we have in Costa Rica? Well, know? let's say more than 50, but uh, yes, according yeah. to the Gary style <laughs> and Alexander Scotch, uh, 54 species, but we'll count, yeah. let's say about 52 species right now. Right. Remember that we have also some of the migrant species like the ruby throated, some of the ones you have uh, in the United States. That's right. And everybody, we're, we're, we are waiting for the volcano to clear up and see if we can show you a nice view. So nice view of the uh, Arnal volcano. So far, we can only see like half of it. The clouds are down. Uh, but uh, maybe let's keep uh, fingers crossed. What I have right here is another crested one feeding mm -hmm. on this uh, ficus tree, which is another gorgeous species. Very common in open areas or secondary forest. Um, these uh, ficus, oh, there's two, you see two of them right now. It's a great source of food for the uh, euphonias, uh, honey creepers, tanagers, uh, flight catchers, and even, um, you know, um, some of the migrant species actually, it help too for them to feed as they are moving through. There is another pendula flying by, hard to see, but uh, they just flew across very fast. Montezuma or pendula, the largest oriole of the world. Remember, orioles or pendulas. Okay, there was a hummingbird right there. Right there. As you can see, some of the flowers, some of the plants in the garden, so really good to attract some birds, like these uh, potted wheat or cattail plants. Okay, we have the... Let me see right here, the pyratic flight catcher coming really close. Look, 
right there on top of the tree. You can see very this chicken nice. breast. I would say it's a very challenging family, very hard to identify fly catchers. Well, it's one of the biggest families in the tropic, but also very hard to identify fly catchers. We go from uh, three inches to uh, 14 inches, like the fork tail fly catcher. Which is a, the hummingbird. Go ahead, ah, oh, there he went. I don't know if you could see his red legs, but that was right. a, a, a bronze tail plumeleteer. Oh, Used to be called, the old name was the red footed plumeleteer which I, I love that name, but now they change it to bronze tail plumage here. Anyways, he is gone. I hope you got a glimpse and saw his uh, red legs. We, we didn't get to see it. I, yeah, hopefully it'll come back, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna put, a, I'm gonna put in an, an order. Okay. So uh, you can hear something calling the here. That are coming to the fruits. That's a banana quid, although he's eating papaya. Let's see. Hey, what happened there? What happened? I'm going to here. Yeah. That. No, the banana quid's gone now. I, I'm hearing all the birds. I don't know if you can hear them, but there are some uh, honey creepers shining and green honey creeper, red leg honey creeper, uh, scarlet uh, rumped tanager. Uh, they're coming around. There he goes, an oropendula. Come on, you can come and eat some uh, fruits. Okay, let's see if we can get, uh, let's see if we can get these, uh... Great curacao, female. Nice. It's just moving across on the ground, but it would be hard because there is a lot of trees in between. Let's see. Um, oh, let me see if it's gonna move, move to right there. Okay. Let's see if it's gonna just pass by there. Let me see. It is a beautiful female. There he goes, there he goes. There he comes. Ooh, come, 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 come. There we go. But it's coming a little bit closer. Oh, there you go. There you go. A gorgeous female. The male is all black. This is the largest bird in this family. Across the family. It's called Pavon, the great Curacao. This is the female. The female is very beautiful. Usually in birds, you know, males are, as I told you before, more colorful more attractive than the female. But in this key situation, female is really colorful and beautiful. It's, okay. What do you have, Paco, there? No, I had a, um, not now, but I did have, um, uh, what do you call this bird? Scarlet pie darkness, a male on this. This is a Cecropia tree, which is a very uh, common tree in the rainforest. They're known as the pioneers. Whenever a gap is created in the rainforest, a big tree falls down, uh, Cecropia trees are the first ones to come up and they grow very fast. And they have a fascinating uh, uh, relationship, mutualistic uh, with the Aztec ants, uh, in which case the trees provide housing and, um, and food for the ants, and instead the ants will protect the tree from anybody who will come to herbivory, you know, any kind of uh, attack to the tree, including vines. Some of the, these ants are very aggressive. That's a nice curacao you have there, Eric. Very happy to have this curacao right here. I feel very happy also because this species is being threatened, you know, for many years, people, you know, are hunting. Uh, and now this is one of the best places, as I told you before, to have a uh, these are uh, gorgeous birds, uh, great curacao. The largest members in this family, Crassidae, or the turkey family, look at the beautiful crest. Sometimes, uh, well, they make, a, actually there's one colleague making a whistle like And the male have an strange sound, like mm -hmm. Very tricky, the male is all black, has like a yellow beak or yellow sear on the beak. Look at this, gorgeous. Too. Big birds make it very noisy, very noisy when they fly. They do actually, uh, they do have a short flight. They don't fly 
much like other birds, very heavy. And let me show you right here in the same spot, we also have some crested guan as well, right there. Two members of the same family, crested guan and great curacao. Also colorful passerinis. Passerini oh. Sanaya, look at what beauty. Yeah. This one is, the name has changed. Is that right, Eric? It used Correct. to be. Sorry, I said, I said Passerinis. If you have the Costa Rican bird book, you will show up as Passerinis, but now it's called Scarlet Rump. Scarlet, Scarlet Rump Tanager. Yes. It used to be two species, correct? That's right. Yes, two species. There was a cherries for the Pacific and would you like to see a squirrel? Let me see. We have, I know it's burning, but look at the beauty. Again, in the cecropia tree, when you're feeding or searching for something, it's feeding on the fruits or just looking for insects. Look at that. Variegated squirrel. I just heard a short billed pigeon calling. Mm -hmm. Short billed pigeon. Oh, I have a, a chachalaca right here. Now we have the three members of the family. <laughs> Look, that's no joke, well, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know you want to. I know you want to tell the joke, but don't tell the joke. <laughs> this is a, a gray-headed chachalaca. The third members of this family crossed it. Now we have crested guan, great curazao, and now we have a chachalaca displaying right here. Gray-headed chachalaca. We're only missing two species of this family, which is the black one and the plain chachalaca in the North Pacific of Costa Rica. This is a quick introduction. Remember that we have all the forest right there. There is actually uh, the volcano, which is cloudy right now, but to the right of the volcano, we have also, mm. what? what do you have right there? Do you have Paco? No, 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 no. Alston came around, and so I'm just saying hello. I had a scarlet rump tanager, but uh, but uh, is oh, he's back, he's back. Wait, wait. Let me see if I can get him. Okay, okay let's see. Is he there? Where is he? No, he's moving way too fast. It's moving way too fast. So Eric, anytime you get something else, I'm going to yeah. put my telescope on the lake. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going back to the Chachalaca. Yeah, I, have it, I have right here, there's more coming in. Oh, very noisy right now, they're chasing. These birds are really tricky because when they get to a place like this, uh, full of food, they just scared all the other birds away since they are a little bit bigger, there's more coming, you see? So there were some uh, canagers, but they scared them away. Oh, I'm very proud to show you right here <laughs> our Costa Rican national bird. How about yeah. that? <laughs> Let me see. Oh, there we go. There we go. What a beauty. What a beauty. Ooh. <laughs> no, actually, it has a lot of meaning for me, actually. I'm from Sara Piqui area, which is the northern part of Costa Rica. But now I live in Heredia in the Central Valley or nearby the capital city, San Jose. And this is the first bird in the morning that I hear. Actually, wake me up. Right. Wake me up all the time. So I don't like it sometimes, especially on Sundays. But but this is a beauty. Look at that. Look at that. Clay colored thrush or clay colored robin. It was called at some point. Our Costa Rica national bird. Remember that Costa Rica is a ecotourism country. It's visited by many people around the world. Ecotourism is very important. Maybe you wonder why they have chose that bird as a national bird. Well, it was back in the time when we didn't think much about ecotourism by that time, the late uh, 70s. So the big tourism industry started in the late 80s. So we should pick it up another one. But I really like this one. People get really identified on this species. You have a different beautiful calls and also it's almost all over the country. So we really like it a lot. Okay. Let me see, I see. Back to the toucans right there. Oh, oh look at this, look at this, bird. this is a, it's a new bird for the trip. It's a green bird with a blue, a little bit of blue on the head. That's a female uh, blue darkness. Ah, can you see her? Yes, yes, we see her. I'm going to put spotlight. Yeah. 
Oh no, there she moved. Where did she go? She moved. Okay, I'll replace her for, <laughs> let me see, what is this? Ah, uh, this is a red leg honey creeper, a female. Well, actually, I couldn't tell you for real whether this is a female or a male, because this is something interesting with these um, species of birds, a red leg honey creeper. Uh, the male's blue with a turquoise cap, but then after breeding season, which is about now, June, July, August, uh, the males, they go back to an eclipse and they look like the females with the black wings. But uh, I believe this is a female. You still can see a little bit of the red legs and the shape of the bill is a little bit down the curve. So Paco, we have a, a um, Lucille asking about the lake. How close is the lake? Oh, the lake? Uh, I will say maybe two miles. Two kilometers in a straight line as the crow flies uh, from here it, to the lake. When when there's a moment where maybe where there's not a bird nearby, you could perhaps scan to the lake so they can see it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can push. Oh, there he goes. There he went. The honey creeper. Here's another honey creeper. This is a different species. And let me see if I can get her because it's she also. There, you, there she is. Can you see her? Yes, we see her. She is a, a green honey creeper uh, female. Uh, name after her because he, the I, male, I have, is I, not. I'm sorry, Paco, to interrupt. I go have ahead, right here ahead, a blue, blue gray tanager. Go blue ahead. Blue gray go tanager ahead. on the scope. I think okay. it moved a little bit. Let me see. Yes, it moved. Okay, mm -hmm. there's still, still, still right there. There you go. Can you see it? And let me just zoom in. Yeah. There you go. A blue gray tanager, males, looks like females. It's hard to tell right now which one is this. A blue gray tanager, one of the most common species right here in open areas. Oh my God. Like this. Look at this. The male come on, came over. Okay. The male. Let me see. So we have a we have a participant asking about the best time to come uh, come down to Costa Rica for birding. Um, would you like? Would either of you like to answer that question? I could. Answer. Um, yeah, yeah. I will say in between December and um, May. You know, a, a, April, May, before the heavy rains come down. Although, you know, burden in our country can be very good any time of the year. Uh, as there is no like, you know, we have like, uh, we have about 700. Uh, uh, let me see, I'm trying to get a bird. We have okay. about 700. There it goes. Here's the male. Can you see him? Yes, we ha we see him. Yeah, that's the male green honey creeper. We had the green one before, and you see now where they get their name. He's not green, actually. He's turquoise. There he went. So yes, I will say in between December and um, and April, May is the best time for birding in the country. A lot of the species are, are nesting. And so you see males and you see females. You see a lot of the behavior uh, of, of, uh, of our species, yeah. Some, some, uh, some birders from North America like to come during the low season too, because the migrants that you would normally see in North America are not here. So it does, um, you know, just, it, it depends on preferences. Right. Yeah, that's that's right. That's correct. I mean, you may have to deal a little bit with a little bit more rain or not rain. It is it's unpredictable, especially when you're on the Caribbean side. On the Pacific side, Central Costa Rica and Pacific side, we have a more uh, of a well-marked uh, dry season where you have five or six months of no rain and five or six months of rain. 
that's on that side of the country. The Caribbean, where we are right now, is unpredictable. You never know. You can have, I think the record here is about 15, 17, or 18 days with no rain. Other than that, it can rain any time of the year. So yes, are there I'm, temperatures I'm... At, in the country at this moment? That's another question. Yeah. What was that? The, another question, are there many visitors? Uh, what's tourism, what's happening with tourism right now in Costa Rica? Um, not much, not much, not only, um, not only because uh, we're in the low season, but also because of pandemia, of COVID. Uh, this is this, this year and last year, 2020, 2021, we are just starting to see a few more tourists. People are feeling a little bit more relaxed. But still, it's not the same as, you know, before we got into this big trouble. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, a lot of guides are at home <laughs> um, yep. look, yeah. doing other, other things, um, finding yeah. other ways to make a living. That's right. That's this is right. great. I have right here another, another color or a Saudi right here in this school. Oh, 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 wonderful, Eric. Yeah, great. Yeah, these are the Saudi. Really close, it's like maybe 20 meters. Oh, oh, hold on, let me see if I can get the kill bill token again. Just flew down to wow. that tree. The tree is gonna show up a little bit because I just see the branches moving there. Let's see, hopefully, it's gonna jump a little bit so we can see it. You can see the bear. Oh, there you go. Yes, the branch is moving right now. That was a, another yellow throated, but. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, no, that's another yellow throat. Okay. Yes, another yellow throat. But the kill bill also just uh, flew in that tree. So hopefully it's going to show up in a moment. Three species. You see really close right here. Three species of chickens right from where we are. We are not moving at all. We are just in the same spot. And you can see how many species we have. So actually, if you ask me when is a good time, yes, of course. For us, it's really good to have all the migrant species through, you know, uh, November through April. But all year round, you can have a good birding in Costa Rica. There's no problem. Always birds out there. Every time you go out, 20, 30, 40 species, you can easily get right outside. Oh, look, I have a dusky cat fly catcher right here. Oh, nice. Hello. You see the dusky cat fly catcher? Yeah. It's a little bit uh, very bright because now it's a strong sunlight coming in this cloud there you go dusky cap flight culture are you able to okay. zoom in a little bit eddie let me try because it is far away let me see yeah far away let's see i think that's what i the best i can do yes that's beautiful right. and, I, and paco has if you, to right, you go ahead paco i have a male um a male um, scarlet thigh. Ah. Darkness, can you see him? He's got a turquoise, yeah. uh, bluish head. He's black, mostly. Okay, see this telescope. Don't do that to me now. Eric, I, I accidentally there. muted There's you. There's a male. Lovely. That's beautiful. Ooh, gorgeous. gorgeous. A male scarlet thigh, Darkness. Gorgeous. Yep. I just had right here a violet headed hummingbird also, but I, I, it's it. been moving fast. It's very hard to catch, very hard to get in the scope because right. it is moving yeah, really fast. Yeah, it's getting a little bit warm, and so the activity tends to go down a little bit, but uh, there's still nice things around. There's still the, there's all these colorful uh, black meat and tanagers and things like that. That's great. Take people on virtual birds. Yes, yes, that, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, let me see. I heard the Montezuma or Pendula also very loud. And I'm going to get back to um, Rufus Tail Hummingbird. Let me see if I can get it here. Oops, he flew away. Let's see. Hey, Heather, can you hear me, Heather? Yes, I hear you. 
Um, if you have, if we have questions because I don't know how much more time we have left. We have I mean, about we have 15 questions. more minutes um, left of one, the tour. One five? 15, one five. So yeah. um, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask the guy, our guides live, this would be a great time to do it. Um, yeah. Also, how, uh, the woodpecker nest, have you seen anything happening over there? Yeah, no, I'm keeping an eye on the woodpecker, but they're being lazy today. They're not working. I don't know what's going on. Uh, they, they're still there. They're still there, but uh, they have... I haven't seen them all morning. I didn't see them on the first tour, nor now. They're not there. Okay, okay. But these uh, scarlet fly darkness is behaving very well. Look at him. I He's know. like almost oh, taking great. a little nap. He's just going to sleep. What do you have, Eric? Oh, I trying to I trying to get the violet headed hummingbird. But oh, it's very good fast. Luck. That's a good <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> We can see a little bit more of the base of the volcano right there, the Adena volcano. Uh, Paco, or can you say the name of the bird that you just had? The, Sorry? The, the, the blue bird that you just had? We have a question on the name again. It's yeah? Scarlet thigh dachnis. Okay. Scarlet thigh dachnis. And, and don't worry about the name. You almost never see the red on their legs. On their thighs. Uh, so, yeah, this is easily a uh, bird that we can change its name to something else that makes more sense. But, anyways, it is called the Scarlet Thigh Dacnis. D A C N I S. Dacnis. It's, re it's related to honey creepers and uh, that group of birds, tanagers and that group of birds. See if I can get this uh, yellow throated chicken again. Also, Oops. Paco, if you don't have any yeah. birds near you, could you pan to the lake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can do the yeah, lake. Do the, the lake. Also, I got a good yeah. view of the aura pendula. I feel like you're here to see. Where is it? Oops. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. Beautiful. That's nice. You see the white ear patch, yellow tail. Oops. Huh. Okay, I'm I'm gonna it's spotlight okay. Paco too. Yeah. The lake. yeah. There, there is the lake. That's a little bit of the lake only. It's the biggest yeah. lake, uh, man-made in the '70s. So the volcano. Um, Arnal volcano erupted in 1968 uh, after like 500 years of being quiet. And then very soon after that, the electricity company built this uh, lake, the dam, uh, down in the valley where some of these villages were. So the lake, I think basically in 1980, 19, mid 70s, that's when it was uh, built. But it is a man-made lake. Very good for fishing, very good for uh, touring. Uh, you can go around there and see all kinds of kingfishers. You see herons. You see cormorants and anhingas. Um, that's about, you know, most of the birds that you can see around the lake. It's a nice place. So, yeah, this place has not only the attraction of the lake, it has the volcano, it has all the colorful birds, which, by the way, let me move my telescope. Sorry. Oop, I have another color or a side right here. Far away. Okay, let me just. Uh, oops. And some toucans calling again. Yeah, listen to the toucans. I love their call. Oh, yeah. I see what you did. These are well now only the male now only the male red leg honey creeper. You can see the red yeah. leg. Can you see his red legs? Yeah. Now he turn around, he's facing away. And 
Thank you, Hercules. But now he's facing the lake. He turned around. Oh, there he went. Oh, there he goes. Anyway, that was a red leg on a creeper. I do have a, a turkey vulture and uh, some kind of raptor flying way up, but it's nearly impossible to chase those things and get a decent uh, view with the telescope. Yes, I got it here also. Let me try to see here. Oops. There you go. Calling. Yeah, but it's right behind some branches, so it's hard to focus on. It's right behind a bromelia. You see right now, that's a bromelia. That's the plant I was talking about before. A great source of food for some birds and amphibians also. Take advantage of that. They collect water all year round from the rain, the rainforest. Bromeliads. There you go. So I just wanted to let everyone know that this, these tours that we are offering are completely free of charge. However, um, if you'd like to leave a tip, um, the guides would be very appreciated. It's been a, it's been a hard year and a half for tourism in Costa Rica. And so any extra help is um, very much appreciated. Uh, we'll be sending through a link um, in the chat where you can leave a tip for the guides. You will also receive it by email as well. Um, and so, you know, there's no ob obligation to do so, but of course it'd be greatly appreciated. Yeah, no, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Kai, for joining us today on this virtual tour. I know this is just a little, a little bit of Costa Rica has to offer. And we really want to take you to different uh, gorgeous places in Costa Rica for birding or for wildlife in general. So I really invite you to come in the future to visit Costa Rica. We really appreciate that. And thank you one more time. I hope that you enjoy this uh, virtual tour. Yes, it was it's um it was great just thinking that, that you haven't moved but two feet, you know, to one less than a meter in any direction. Uh, Marco has a bird, I'm sorry. And I'm everything sorry. we've seen. So that's amazing. I'm gonna what switch over to Paco. Paco. Switching over to Paco. Ah, uh, he went in. It was the one oh, I did have a, a black a black cheeked black cheeked uh, woodpecker in my telescope but he just went back into the nest i think yeah well maybe maybe he'll come out again much on the space no yeah this is one of the uh medium-sized woodpecker we have i said said before we have um, small woodpeckers like olivaceous piculet which is a tiny tiny the smallest woodpecker on in Central America. And then we have medium size, which is this uh, black chick, uh, red belly, Hoffman's, red crown, all these uh, uh, Melanerpes uh, group. And then we have some of the big ones that Eric uh, showed us before, uh, the lineated and the pale bill. Uh, yeah, that's a, here's a honey creeper. How are we doing on time, Heather? We've got about seven more minutes. Um, and oh, okay. so we can, you know, still find a quite a few things yeah, yeah, yeah. to share with you in seven minutes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do in stay seven tuned. Minutes, we, can. we have um, a question. Are you able to take pictures through your scopes? Yeah, yes. we, we take pictures through our scope. Yes, pictures right and now, videos. Yeah, right now Paco is, is attached to his scope, right? Uh, with an adapter. Um, that's, that's right. Yeah, so that's why the lake view was a little strange because it's through the actual um, telescope. Um, Eric is going back and forth, handheld and to his telescope as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, we have a comment from a viewer saying that in 2017, he did a I don't hear you well, Ashley. Oh no, I think I got one of the one of the biggest woodpecker right here. Let oh me good. See what we Switching. Have. Switching. Oh. Yes, please. Okay, oh no. What do you have? Uh, I think it's a lineated, but I don't know. This is pale bill. I don't see it. I it looks it's... like a let me check because 
I'm very excited right here. Let me check what we have. <laughs> Come up a little bit, up, up a little bit. Yeah. This back up. Oh, there he goes. Ah, there he is. There he goes. That's alineated. You see the stripe on the sides? Yeah. Started from the base yeah. of the bill, red head. Yeah. Lineated yeah, yeah, yeah. with pecker. This is a drill couples lineatus. Related of uh, your affiliated woodpecker at home. Pretty big, one of the biggest woodpecker we have in Costa Rica. This one and the pale bill, both. Remember what Paco said before about this cecropia tree and the Aztec ends and the symbiotic relationship. So this is what probably the woodpecker is looking for, some ends, huh? No. Mm -hmm. Going up in the tree. This is really funny because if you start to climb up this tree, a bunch of ants just come out and start to bite <laughs> you. Or, yeah, and that's what they actually yeah. do, protecting the tree. Yes. In turn, the tree provides full of uh, food for the ants, you know. Paco, what do you there have? I have... Oh. A hummingbird. Ooh. Yeah, we see it. Kind of. Wait. Uh, now we do. You can see it there. Okay. Let me see with my binoculars. I can't. It's very dark where the hummingbird is. Oh, I have right here a uh, scarlet type. Oh, it's a red for the prominent tear. Sorry, nice. go ahead, Eric. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, ahead Eric. Better. Isaac, Paco, yours is better. Okay, yeah, red-footed plumile. I mean, red foot. I keep calling it red-footed plumileteer, but I, the new name is bronze tail plumileteer. That's the name of this bird, and the light is not very good. I don't know if you can see his red legs. Oh, uh, oh now it's gone. Now it's gone. Now it's gone. Yeah. But yeah, that is one of the largest uh, hummingbirds in the in the country. One of the largest and the only one with red feet. That's why I didn't understand why. Why would they change them his name? Yeah. I will try to move a little bit here because I'm hearing a hummingbird calling here. So let's see if I can get the scope. Oh, so Ashley was reading uh, one of the comments, but we couldn't hear you well, Ashley. So I'll read it. I think it was this one from Mark Hamilton. I was with uh, Jody in February, 2017, one of my best trips ever. So that's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. To, that's well, we, we hope you'll come back, Mark, and join us. <laughs> Costa Rica is the yeah. kind of place you can visit over and over and over again and still see new things. Yeah, that's right. Yep, yeah. Even though it's a small country, uh, in two weeks it's nearly impossible to see the whole country. So yeah, you can. Uh, we have um, itineraries that go like central and north of Costa Rica, and then some itineraries that go central and south, all the way down to almost Panama. Yeah, it is small piece of land, but uh, impossible to do it in two weeks uh, properly. You know, like enjoying finding the birds at a nice pace and all of that. Wonderful. Okay, well, we're, we're um, getting to the top of the hour. So we're mm -hmm. almost to the end of our time together this morning. Oh, what do you have, Paco? You've got something there, let's see. I have a... Um... This is a green honey creeper female. Uh, she's facing away at the moment. There she is enjoying a piece of papaya. <laughs> oh, I hear my woodpecker. I think he's back on the nest. Let me check. Yeah. She's showing her head. I'm sorry, I have to move my telescope really fast. But yeah, it's uh, okay. Uh, maybe we can. <laughs> I 
Come on. Okay, there she. Yep, yeah, we can just focusing in and. Oh, nice. I can't. There it is. Yay. Yeah. He Fantastic. came out of the net, but he was just showing his head. Oh, and oh. there went. No, oh, just wait, down below. Not, just went below. Far. He didn't go far. I have a branch in front. I don't understand why we don't cut all these fours down. We can see. Uh, maybe there. Maybe. Eric, if you got something. Yes, I have it. something right here. I have a okay, a Rufus tail hummingbird. Yeah. While well, you are getting the the, let me see if I can zoom in here. Oh, there you go. Flew away. Okay. That was a roof. Ahead. I gotta head back to Paco because he's got the woodpecker. There he is. Maybe. Um, well, I can. The light is not very good. The light there we go. Is there we go. That's good. Right there. And you've gone too far. To, yeah, right there. There. Yep. Let me see if I can focus. Where? It really is a different skill to have a cell phone attached to your spotting scope, isn't it? It's hard. It's, it just is something foreign. Yeah. Can you see the? Can you see the bird? Can you see his red crown? I see it, but see it's a little bit down. If you could lower your scope mm -hmm. a little slightly, lower it slightly. There we go. Now it's more in the center of our. Oh, now there you go. Right there. There. Yep. Yeah. So then you can just focus in. Let me try. You have no idea how difficult. I, I know it is hard. It is. There we go. That's beautiful. Is that a little better? Yes, beautiful. Okay, so I was telling you about uh, small uh, woodpeckers in Costa Rica, small, uh, medium, and large. This is one of the medium ones for people uh, in the United States. The red belly. Woodpecker will be the closest uh, thing. Also the same genus, Melonerpes. They do share, they're close related to red belly and black cheeked is what you're looking at right at the moment. What is that? I have a different uh, hummingbird right here also. Okay. I hope it will Switching stay right up. there. Switching the over. Hummingbird. Blue chested, look, that little guy right there. Beautiful. Let me try to, let me try to zoom in here. There you go. Oh, beautiful. It's a little hummingbird right here. One of the special. Oh, there it goes away. nice. Blue, blue chested hummingbird. Very nice. One. Thank you for sharing that one. Beautiful. Okay, let me see. Who we have her right there. Scarlet like darkness. Now I went quiet for a little bit. As you can see, there's not much activity right now. Even the birds stopped calling. So I can hear some cicadas. I would peck far away in the distance. But it happens sometimes, you know, like the best time is early in the morning when you go out, but then we have some quiet time and then the, the activity start picking up. Especially when the sun goes down a little bit after two or three, that's when we actually go out back in the forest uh, in search of more, more species. Well, we're going to um, maybe Paco, oh, Paco has, has his woodpecker one more time. I'm going to put Paco uh, just so you can enjoy that woodpecker for a few seconds longer. Um, that's nice. And then we it's will sign off. We have another virtual tour July 7th in Paraíso de Quetzal, um, which is a beautiful highland area with loads of hummingbirds. Um, so we hope that you'll join us for, for that virtual tour as well. Um, we may even get really lucky and perhaps we'll have a, a Quetzal come and a Quetzal come and visit. Um, so we do hope you'll join us then. You can also see future uh, virtual tour dates on our website, katingatours.com. So we'll be continuing to do these uh, throughout the season. It's a, a throughout the year, it's a good um good way to bring the birds to you since uh, so many people are not able to travel at this time. But we do hope that will change. We hope that people will begin to feel more comfortable and 
the protocols here in Costa Rica are fantastic. Um, we've really adapted well to pandemic birding. Oh, look at that. That is so sweet. Uh, so sweet. Yeah. I can't move because if I move, then the phone starts shaking. But anyways, that was the woodpecker again. He's been working on his nest. Uh, nice. Excellent. Are we connected? We're still connected, yeah. Um, we're going to, again, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And we do hope you'll join us for, uh, for the next one. Um, and it was a pleasure having you. A lot of familiar, familiar faces, uh, um, even though we don't see your faces, familiar names uh, as participants. It's lovely to see all of you um, joining us today. And we, we um, I'll, I'll just sign it over or hand it over to Paco and Eric to say one last goodbye. Um, you might want to switch the switch to your faces, to your can switch your cameras to your faces so that you can people we can see you Paco? yes uh all right okay. sorry yes thank you very much once again thank you very much for uh joining us today it was a pleasure uh thank you also i hope that you will visit costa rica in the future we wait for you right here thank you very much <laughs> thank you eric thank you thank you thank you for taking uh your time to join us on this uh, trip and thank you to mother nature who gave us this beautiful morning and all the birds that came around and everything else we were able to enjoy thank you very much we would like to have you again on a different location a different habitat like heather was explaining uh, you know because here in costa rica even though it's a small country everywhere you go you're going to see different birds so now we're like a middle elevation Caribbean slope, but the next one is going to be up at the 2,000 or 3,000 meters above sea level. Uh, a whole different uh, uh, group of birds that you can see up there, including a lot of the endemic species. So we hope to have you there and we can share with you all these beautiful birds. Thank you so much. And we hope you'll join us uh, and come to this amazing birding hotspot, the RNL Observatory Lodge. It's really a, a, a must visit location. It is a place that we include on the majority of our itineraries. And we, as you can see in Eric's view, you can see a little bit of the volcano starting to peek out a little bit, just the base, the clouds are covering up the top. Um, and this is a view you can enjoy for, uh, from most of the bedrooms actually. So it's quite, it's quite a spectacular location. Um, maybe Paco, before we sign off, you might be able to remove your phone from, I don't know how hard that is from your adapter no, and show us the lake, um, so they can see the view from the lake itself, from the, um, from the hotel. Uh, there is the there volcano. There's the volcano. There is a big, big white cloud on the top of it. You don't only... You don't even see half of it. There's a lot taller than that. And then we go down. This, all the activity of this volcano came down this way. This is the, the west uh, side of the volcano. So in 68, when it first went, it created three different craters on this side of the volcano. And we move around down to and yeah. the lake. Now we're facing north. I mean, west. Uh, very nice. Uh, the lake is it's nice. Uh, it's always green. This never changes. It's, this is a rainforest, always uh, green. Can you see the lake, uh, Heather? Yes. And everybody yeah, else? it's beautiful. If you zoom in okay. a little bit, we'll see it. Uh, we'll see it even better if, if that's possible. Oh, I, can, I can do that, I think. Yeah, there we go. That's lovely. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's a place where people make their living a lot in fishing and boat rides. Uh, even windsurfing is uh, popular for these places. No, we don't do windsurfing on our trips, but uh, um, it's a very popular, very popular uh, area here in Arenal with all the attractions that he has, including, including the beautiful volcano. But you can see only a little bit of it. <laughs> Okay, everyone. Well, thank you again for joining us and have a beautiful day. And we hope to see you on July 7th. We'll be signing off now.
Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.